and welcome back and today I want to do a hardware review nice and quick one of the QNAP TVS672N. This is their brand new 5 gigabits per second um, NAS device and this is the follow up to the TVS672 XT. Now the reason I'm up here and not here on camera is because I want this device to take centre stage. I want this device to be focused throughout and therefore I'm going to get the camera as close as possible to it and unfortunately that means I'm not in it. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing let me know in the comments. But what we want to look at today is effectively the hardware construction of this NAS device because this is the follow up to the Thunderbolt and 10 GBE NAS device. It arrives at around a thousand quid and that's without that and without the hard drive media inside. So it's not a cheap device. But with that, you get an eighth generation i3 processor inside. You arrive with four gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 32 gig of memory and the device along with supporting up to the very latest 16 TB drives from Seagate Iron Wolf as well as uh, Iron Wolf Pro and Iron Wolf Standard drives. The device also supports NVMe SSD drives inside, which means that when you want to really improve the read and write speeds internally, you've got that great tiered and auto tiering and caching system built in with the QTS software and on the rear of it, that five gigabit ethernet port. So let's take a good look at this device. Now, straight away, as we can see from the front, ignore that there, that's just a plastic sticker that I'm saving, um, all this mark here. We've got an LCD panel on the front here that gives us real time information about the device, which can then be controlled. And you can also find out stuff about the IP, internal temperatures and the RAID environment. And those IPs respond to each of the individual ports. On the side here, we have got that USB 3.1 Gen 2 port. That means that we can attach USB drives of up to 10 gigabit per second via USB connectivity, which is going to be great for backups and more. Now, each of the trays there on the front are click and load plastic trays that are lockable and we can remove them and there's our tray right there and again click and load these things on the side are removed but they are plastic trays there are screw holes for two and a half inch media built into the base but there's still no denying it these are plastic trays so on the one hand noise levels will be lower but at the same time one could argue that it's plastic trays people aren't a huge fan of so i think that may be an area that divides opinion now, what I'm also going to do is get all of the trays out so we can take a good look inside this NAS. Get those over there, let them fall on the floor. So we can take a good look at the internal controller bay. Now, inside there, we can see all six of those hard drive bays are SATA based. And along with that, on the side is the SODIM memory ports right here to get real time, a uh, real time look there at the memory that's included. There are two bays, each bay supporting up to 16 gig of DDR4 SODIM memory. On the other side, we've got a little bit of power connector there, but not a huge amount on display. Now, inside, we can see that the chassis is hollow all the way around those drives, and that assists airflow throughout the device, both passive and active. On the base of the device, we've got additional cooling there uh, for each of the drives, along with those rubberized feet. Now. On the sides of the device, we have ventilation there, but on the other side, ventilation here, and there is also an active fan that hopefully will get the lid of this device off so you can have a closer look at the great heat sink and fan assembly inside this device that I'm hoping is identical to that of the TVS672 XT. Now, if we rotate this around, we can take a very good look at the ports and connections. Hopefully the light there won't be so much of a problem. On the rear of this device, for a start, you've got these rear fans right here. Each of those fans um, can be controlled automatically by the system or set manually to have increased or decreased RPM. There is a PSU here built into the top of the device, and I believe that is a 250 watt PSU. On the top, we have two PCIe slots, each of which can support their own PCIe card or even a dual um, port card, a dual uh, definition height card even, that can be supported in there. Everything from QNAP's own QM2 cards that arrive with increased ports and internal caching options, all the way through to 25 gig and 40 gig cards and GPU cards. Although, of course, the amount of power that can be delivered to those cards will make all the difference. And with GPU pass-through enabled, 
that may be something you'll want to look at but given that the CPU inside this device is that quad core um, uh, 8th gen i3 CPU you have already got quite a lot of power along with embedded HD 630 graphics on the side here we've got that 4k HDMI port that means that we can get 60 frames per second 4k media outputted from this device Along with that, of course, we have got, thanks to uh, QNAP's own HD station software, you're able to take advantage of things like Surveillance Station, Linux Station, Plex, and more. All of it by HDMI locally to a supported monitor, as well as keyboard video and mouse support with those USB ports. We've also got the 5 gigabit Ethernet port here, which if you are going to take advantage of things like the latest um, Wi-Fi 6 connectivity that modern routers are arriving with, 802.11ax, then you may see the benefit in having a NAS that can support 5GBE along with those newer generation routers, removing all bottlenecks between you and your data. On top of that, we've got two 1GBE ports that can be link aggregated together, and that means that network connectivity via a supported switch will give you lots of output between this device and your localized network. And if you've got multiple devices connected to this NAS in your home or business environment, you will see the benefits of that. Now, USB ports based on the rear here, you may notice different colors, shapes, and sizes. At the top here in blue, we have got that USB 3.1 Gen 1 port at five gigabits per second. We have another USB 3.1 Gen 2 port, and along with that, two more USB-C ports. So a whole myriad of connections and speeds readily available. On top of that, we have got ports there at the bottom for audio in and out, and a speaker for real-time information about our device. So, while I get the top of this chassis removed here on camera, it's worth highlighting the reason why 5GBE NAS is such a big deal. Now, NAS has been around for a long time, but I'll tell you what's been around longer than NAS, and that is one gigabit Ethernet. One gigabit Ethernet has existed for more than a decade, close to two decades now in some places, and with our data getting bigger, the speed at which we need data getting grander, and the ways in which we enjoy our data becoming more, you know, more detailed, one GBE networks are just not cutting it. This combined with most of our devices becoming wireless results in the fact that we need better and faster and more reliable ways to access our data, not by just by one device, but by many at a given time. Now, one answer to that over the years has been the, gr the growth and affordability of 10 gigabit Ethernet. But there's no denying that 10 GBE is still not as cheap as one gigabit Ethernet. And so many of you are not spending 10 GBE money, you're spending 1 GBE money. And that's why the rise of 5 GBE and 2.5 GBE solutions is such a big deal. Because it makes things more affordable, 5 GBE is completely backwards compatible with 1 GBE and can be utilized by most 10 GBE switches and devices. The result is that you can invest in a NAS now that has a huge scope of growth over time and is still accessible now. Call it an upgrade 1.5 rather than 2.0. That added once again with the idea of a lot of, uh, a lot of more modern routers and switches arriving with support for 2.5, 5GBE and 10GBE uh, 10 solutions and NAS that has a nice middle ground and manages to incorporate the cost of 1GBE and 5GBE together is very attractive indeed. So we've removed the top of this device and we can take a good look inside. We can see that power connector all the way around to the top, which leads to our PSU at the top of the device. If we look down, we can see lots of airflow there and a space that's been reserved there at the top for that PCIe card space for both cards there and two different generations available at the base there we can see the heat sink from the other side of the processor based inside this device it's worth mentioning that there isn't a quantia controller inside this device which allows you to manage that network connectivity also on the rear this enormous heat sink that is used to keep things cool for that intel i3 cpu along with a great dedicated cooling system here based on the side that promotes active airflow over the heatsink as well as passing it through the top and bottom of these fans through the device. There is also a little bit of flash memory, a little ROM there, 
that holds on to the OS when it's in operation and I believe that is a 4 gig um, bit of flash memory but the device itself on a hardware level is fantastically compact and although I talk about it a lot on this channel about NAS devices that are so much better than their PC alternates and NASs that I use to explain why it is better to buy a dedicated NAS system rather than you know using an old Mac Mini or trying to repurpose old PC hardware. This is a very, very, very good example of why you should buy a NAS because the construction and the architecture and the work that goes into creating a, a device like this that is designed to be on for 24 seven, you know, seven days a week, uh, every month, every year, you need something that's designed for longevity and that's why a device like this is so important. It's not the cheapest, but it does a very good job. This has been a hardware review of the TVS672N. I'm gonna be doing speed tests with this along with my previous speed tests that are in the can waiting to be published on the 872N as well. I look forward to sharing those with you, so do stay subscribed and click like if you, if you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys next time.